it's time to take apart the iPhone 14 Plus. If you're interested in seeing more videos like this, make sure you subscribe and follow me on Twitter so you'll be notified when I upload a new video. And if you need any tools, there are links in the description. This iPhone doesn't have a SIM slot, but if yours does, make sure to remove that first. Next, there are two pentalope screws on the bottom by the charger port which need to be removed. Heat needs to be applied to the front of the phone to loosen up the adhesive underneath the screen, and then a pry tool can be used to pry the screen off. The screen can now be lifted up from the right to the left. There are two tri-wing or tri-tip screws which need to be removed. The screen can now be disconnected from the main board. Here's a look at the other side of the screen. There are two tri-wing or tri-tip screws holding down the cover, over the flex cable for the secondary microphone, and proximity sensor. Now some more heat needs to be applied to the back glass to loosen up the adhesive underneath, and then we can use a plastic pry tool to pry that back glass off as well. The back glass can now be lifted up from the left to the right. There's a single tri-tip or tri-wing screw which needs to be removed. Now the flex cable can be disconnected. This flex cable connects the wireless charging coil, as well as another microphone and the LED flash diffuser to the main board. There's also some graphite film to help transfer heat. Four more tri-wing or tri-tip screws need to be removed. At this point the battery can be disconnected from the main board. There are adhesive pull tabs provided to help pry the battery off, but I really hate using those pull tabs, they almost always rip. So I'm going to use some isopropyl alcohol and apply some to the edges of the battery and let it sit there for about 30 seconds so it eats away at the adhesive underneath, making it easier to pry the battery off. Here's a better look at the 4325 milliamp hour battery. Now we can continue on to disconnect the rest of the flex cables. Here's a better look at the 12 megapixel front facing camera and face ID. Here's a better look at this antenna. There are three Phillips screws which are holding down the camera assembly. There's a 12 megapixel ultra wide and a 12 megapixel main camera. The main camera is the only one with sensor shift optical image stabilization. There are 8 more Phillips screws that have to be removed. Here's a better look at the earpiece speaker and antenna assembly. There's a rubber gasket over the speaker opening. Now the 4 standoff screws holding the main board down have to be removed. The main board is a sandwiched style board. On this side we can see a 5G millimeter wave antenna, some rubber gaskets around the connectors, and graphite film over the shield to help transfer heat. On the other side there's more rubber gaskets, as well as graphite film on the shields. Now there are 4 more Phillips screws which need to be removed. And there's another standoff screw. Here's a look at the Taptic engine. One more standoff screw has to be removed. Here's a better look at this flex cable and this plastic placeholder where a SIM reader would go. Seven Phillips screws and two tri-wing screws need to be removed. Here's a better look at the bottom speaker assembly and there's a rubber gasket and mesh filter over the opening. We have a better look at this microphone over here, and there's one over here, 
as well as the barometer over here. To remove this bottom flex cable assembly for the charger port, we need to remove three standoff screws and seven Phillips screws. Here's a better look at that. To remove the other millimeter wave antenna which is on this side, as well as the buttons, there are some more Phillips screws holding those in place on the frame. For the repairability score I give this phone a 7 out of 10. Now it's time to put the phone back together. Once everything's back in place, power on the phone and you're done. I hope you enjoyed this video and I'll see you in the next one.